on July 14, 2025, beneath the calm waters of Clear Lake, just 90 miles from San Francisco, an earthquake swarm of 847 tremors shattered the silence. Scientists now warn this is no ordinary volcanic field. With 105 hidden vents and signs of deep magma movement, Clear Lake's dormant supervolcano may be waking after 10,000 years of quiet. Why now? And what does this mean for the 68,000 people living above it? The answers could change how we see California's greatest hidden threat. Clear Lake stretches across the hills of Northern California, its surface rippling with the breeze, dotted by fishing boats and weekend kayakers. On summer afternoons, children swim along the shore while egrets hunt in the reeds nearby. The water seems endless, a calm blue mirror under the sky. But this peaceful scene hides a volcanic field that dwarfs the lake itself. The Clear Lake volcanic field covers 380 square miles, an area larger than the city of San Jose. Beneath the towns of Clear Lake, Lakeport, and Middletown, the ground is riddled with more than 100 volcanic vents, cinder cones, and ancient lava domes. Mount Kanakti, nearly 5,000 feet tall, rises above the shoreline, its slopes a patchwork of oak woodlands and basalt outcrops. Few visitors realize that the mountain is not just a landmark, but the exposed rim of a volcanic giant. Everyday life unfolds above this hidden system. More than 68,000 people live and work around the lake. Local marinas rent paddle boards and jet skis to tourists every weekend. Vineyards line the hills and campgrounds fill with families each summer. Yet the land itself is restless, warmed by heat rising from deep underground. This heat powers the geysers, the world's largest geothermal energy complex, just a few miles to the south. Pipes snake across the hills, carrying steam from wells drilled thousands of feet below. The geysers generate enough electricity to power nearly a million homes, all drawn from the volcanic energy that simmers beneath Clear Lake. The field size and complexity are easy to miss from the water's edge, but layers of volcanic ash buried beneath the lake bed and surrounding valleys tell a different story. Over the past million years, Clear Lake's volcanic field has erupted again and again. Some eruptions sent lava flowing across the landscape. Others exploded with enough force to scatter ash for miles. The most recent eruption happened just 11,000 years ago, a blink in geological time. In the quiet between eruptions, the land has been shaped by geothermal springs, mineral deposits, and slow, persistent heat. Even now, hot springs bubble at the surface, and patches of ground near the sulfur bank mine steam on cold mornings. On the surface, Clear Lake is a place of recreation and routine. But beneath the calm, a vast volcanic system stretches outward in all directions, its boundaries marked by subtle clues, warm soil, mineral-stained rocks, and the faint odor of sulfur on the wind. The volcanic field is silent for now, but its presence is impossible to ignore for those who know where to look. The question is not whether the volcano is there, it's how much of its power remains hidden, waiting. At 3.42 a.m. on July 14, 2025, seismometers registered a magnitude 4.1 earthquake beneath the eastern basin of Clear Lake. The signal was unusual, its waveform stretched out a long period tremor that hinted at more than just rock fracturing. Within hours, the region's seismic network lit up with activity. Over the next 17 days, 847 earthquakes rippled through the crust, each one logged and mapped by scientists watching in real time. The swarm didn't stay put. Instead, the epicenters crept northwest, tracing a line along a fault that runs directly beneath the lake and toward the heart of the volcanic field. Most of these quakes clustered at depths between 12 and 18 kilometers. For volcanologists, that depth is no accident. It's the precise band where magma accumulates in dormant systems, far below the surface, but close enough to matter. Dr. Margaret Chen, who has spent more than two decades studying Clear Lake, noticed the pattern immediately. She pored over the seismic records, noting how the events lined up along the fault, how their depths fell within the window where magma might be gathering. In a memo to her colleagues, she wrote, 
this is exactly where we'd expect to see movement if the system is starting to recharge. The pace and direction of the swarm set it apart from the region's routine background tremors. Instead of random scatter, the earthquakes migrated in a steady progression as if something deep below was forcing its way through the crust. Each event was small enough to go unnoticed by most residents, but together they formed a clear signal, a sudden, organized disturbance in a system that had been quiet for millennia. Seismic stations across Lake County captured the story in real time. The frequency of quakes, their migration path, and their depth all pointed to the same conclusion. Something had changed underground, and it was happening quickly. Dr. Chen and her team began cross-checking the data, looking for any sign that the swarm was just the beginning. The urgency in their correspondence reflected a growing sense of unease. The ground beneath Clear Lake was sending a message, and for the first time in living memory, the scientific community was listening closely. Carbon dioxide escaping from the ground is one of the first clues scientists look for when magma starts to move. At the Sulphur Bank mine, sensors track these emissions day and night, logging every fluctuation. In early August 2025, the numbers began to rise. Within two weeks, daily carbon dioxide output jumped from 85 tons to nearly 500 tons a level rarely seen outside active volcanic crises. This surge was not isolated. Helium-3, a rare isotope that signals deep mantle activity, increased by more than a third at the same sites. Only magma rising from the Earth's depths brings this much helium-3 to the surface, bypassing the filters of the crust above. Temperature probes buried five meters below ground in areas near Clear Lake and the mine recorded a sharp rise. By mid-September, some sensors reached 43 degrees Celsius, hot enough to wilt plants and dry out the shallow soil. These changes didn't stay hidden underground. Lake scientists noticed a drop in dissolved oxygen at depth, a sign that warmer water and increased gas seepage were changing the chemistry of the lake itself. A 13% decrease in oxygen coincided with small fish die-offs and early algae blooms along the northern shore. Each of these signals, gas, heat, and water quality, can be explained by magma rising and releasing energy as it nears the surface. When taken together, they form a pattern. Clear Lake's volcanic system is not just restless in theory. It is showing measurable, physical changes above ground, making the invisible activity below suddenly visible to those who know where to look. In April 2025, Dr. James Nakamura and his team at UC Berkeley released seismic images that changed everything scientists thought they knew about Clear Lake's volcanic system. Using advanced tomography, they mapped a reservoir stretching 67 kilometers beneath the region. Not a single contained magma chamber, but a vast network of interconnected pockets, each holding partially molten rock. These pockets aren't isolated, they're linked by narrow corridors, forming a hidden lattice that runs beneath the lake, the surrounding towns, and out toward the fault systems that shape the region's geology. The imaging revealed that magma isn't just pooling in one spot. Instead, it moves along these corridors, sometimes gathering in clusters, sometimes spreading out. This structure means that pressure can migrate through the system, responding to shifts in the Earth's crust far beyond Clear Lake itself. The Makama Fault, the San Andreas, even distant tremors, all have the potential to influence how magma flows and builds beneath the surface. Dr. Nakamura's findings forced a revision of every existing hazard model for the area. What had been considered a local volcanic risk, something contained within the boundaries of the lake and its immediate surroundings, now appeared as a systemic threat. The magma network's reach and its potential for sudden change is far greater than previously believed. Scientists realized that an event triggered in one part of the system could have cascading effects, amplifying the danger for communities both near and far. For emergency planners and policymakers, the implications are stark. The old maps no longer capture the true scope of the hazard. The risk isn't just from a single eruption point, it's from a complex living system connected to the faults and pressures of an entire region. 
Dr. Nakamura's work has made it clear, Clear Lake's volcanic threat is not just local, it's woven into the fabric of Northern California itself. Maria Rodriguez stands in her backyard in Clear Lake holding a wilted tomato plant. She's lived here for 31 years, but this summer, the soil felt different. When she pressed her hand into the earth, it was warm, too warm for roots to survive. She started keeping a log of garden temperatures and watched her water bill climb as she tried to keep her plants alive. By September, nothing would grow. She isn't alone. Across town, Tom Chen surveys the cracks zigzagging through his driveway. He paid $8,700 to have it resurfaced just two years ago. Now, three new fissures run from his garage to the street, each nearly two inches wide. He filed a claim with the county, joining 126 other homeowners reporting foundation damage since August. Some have lost entire patios or seen walls begin to buckle. The economic cost of uncertainty spreads quickly. Jennifer Larson, who runs a bed and breakfast in Lakeport, has watched her bookings drop by nearly a third since the unrest began making headlines. Longtime guests call with questions she can't answer. People want reassurance, she says, but I don't know what to tell them anymore. Property values in the highest risk neighborhoods have fallen by 11%. For many, insurance is now out of reach. One couple saw their annual premium jump from $2,100 to nearly $5,000 almost double in just a few months. Clear Lake 68,000 residents carry these burdens quietly, adjusting to a new normal where the ground beneath their homes feels unreliable. For some, the threat is financial. For others, it's the fear that the next sign of trouble will be something no one can ignore. Sediment cores pulled from the bottom of Clear Lake reveal a history written in ash. Scientists at UC Davis in Oregon State have identified 23 distinct volcanic ash layers in mud and clay dating back 150,000 years. Each layer is a silent record of an eruption, some thin, some thick, each marking a moment when the volcano broke its quiet. These layers don't appear at random. Instead, they cluster together, separated by long stretches of calm. The last cluster of eruptions happened between 11,000 and 10,000 years ago when four separate events blanketed the region in ash within a single millennium. Since then, the lake has been silent, but history shows that silence does not mean safety. Dr. Emily Thornton, a paleovolcanologist at Oregon State, describes this pattern as a recharge cycle. Over centuries, magma accumulates deep underground while the surface remains undisturbed. Pressure builds slowly, invisible to those above. Then, in a span of decades or centuries, the volcano can erupt again and again before falling quiet once more. The evidence in the lake bed is clear. Clear Lake's dormancy has always been temporary. The system rests, it never retires. The presence of so many ash layers, 23 in total, proves that long periods of quiet are part of the cycle not an end to it. As Dr. Thornton notes, based on the geological record, we may be at the beginning of a new eruptive cycle. The current unrest matches what we'd expect to see if the system is reawakening. The past is preserved in mud, but its lessons are urgent. Dormancy is not a promise. It is a warning. On September 8, 2025, the U.S. Geological Survey issued an official alert upgrading Clear Lake's volcanic status from normal to advisory. The move acknowledged a level of unrest not seen in decades, but behind the public notice, the reality of monitoring the field told a more troubling story. 19 seismic stations ring the lake and its volcanic vents, each designed to track the faintest tremors and shifts below ground. Seven of those stations are more than 15 years old. Three failed during the July earthquake swarm, leaving gaps in coverage when scientists needed data most. Two stations have yet to be repaired, sidelined by a budget that stretches only so far. The entire monitoring effort for Clear Lake runs on $340,000 a year, barely a tenth of what Yellowstone receives, even though the risk to people and property is comparable. Dr. Sarah Mitchell, the U.S. Geological Survey scientist in charge, faced a packed auditorium in Lakeport at the end of September. Residents pressed for answers, but Mitchell's message was blunt. 
The region was experiencing unusual volcanic unrest, she said, but the tools meant to provide early warning were aging and incomplete. We're flying partially blind, admitted one U.S. Geological Survey staffer speaking off the record. The equipment dates back to 2009. Real-time GPS, modern gas sensors, and rapid response upgrades remain out of reach. The alert upgrade signaled official concern, but the system's ability to track what happens next is limited by funding, technology, and time. Clear Lake lies at the intersection of shifting tectonic plates, where the Gorda Plate slides beneath North America and the San Andreas and Makama faults carve through the landscape. These aren't just distant geological features, they're active boundaries, capable of transmitting stress for hundreds of miles. Recent studies show Clear Lake's magma system is tied to these regional faults, meaning an earthquake far away could trigger changes deep beneath the lake. The risk here stretches well beyond the shoreline, linking the Bay Area, the Sierra foothills, and everything in between into a single, restless system. For the 68,000 people living around Clear Lake, geography shapes every emergency plan. Only highways 29 and 20 connect Lake County to the outside world. Both are narrow, winding, and vulnerable to landslides or wildfires. Emergency planners estimate that if both routes stay open, 15,000 people an hour could evacuate. But any closure caused by an eruption, earthquake, or even a blocked bridge would trap thousands. Drills and hazard models suggest bottlenecks are almost inevitable, with the real risk measured in hours and minutes. History offers little comfort when it comes to timing. Mount St. Helens gave just two months warning before erupting. Mount Pinatubo offered 10 weeks. At Clear Lake, the volcanic field has been restless for months, but no one can say how long this window will last. The system could quiet down for years or accelerate without warning. The only certainty is that the clock is running and the stakes are measured not in theories, but in lives and the limits of escape. In July 2025, Clear Lake's volcanic field recorded 847 earthquakes in just 17 days an unmistakable signal that something has changed beneath Northern California's largest lake. Scientific teams have now mapped a 67-kilometer magma reservoir and documented record spikes in gas emissions and ground temperatures, confirming that magma is moving at depth. Yet, essential monitoring equipment remains outdated, with nearly 40% of seismic stations either offline or in need of repair, and funding lags far behind similar U.S. volcanoes. The geological record shows Clear Lake's eruptions come in clusters after long periods of silence, raising urgent questions that no one can yet answer. Will this unrest fade, or is it the start of a new eruptive cycle? What is clear is that 68,000 people live above a system scientists now call more complex and active than previously believed. The signs of volcanic unrest are real, and the time to strengthen preparedness is now, while Clear Lake's next move remains uncertain.